What up, everybody? How we all doing this weekend? People that are not familiar with what this is, this is the Transformer Swag Podcast live stream Saturday night. The I lose track of time on this. It is March 20th, 2021. We're still stuck in the craziness in the world, so we're here tonight to just relax. Talk Transformers, go over the news this week, take some super chat questions, and enjoy the world that is Transformers. So how are we all doing today? I am Proto Man, and let's jump right into it, and then we'll do some hanging out. So, first up this week, first up this week, and it was an interesting week when it comes to Decepticon villains, let's talk about that spoiler box set. So, <clears throat> Walmart did their collector con on Monday, and they were doing all their different reveals. Most of them we already kind of knew. And, hmm, this doesn't surprise me. You know, we talked about it already. I had my speculations. And more or less, it kind of came to fruition. I mean, I didn't expect uh, the little AllSpark cube and the little bandolier with the Matrix. But uh, being wrong in different areas or not knowing it at all is even a better thing. Looks great. I like it. For people that weren't able to pick up that Siege Megatron, this is a second opportunity to pick up that mold. It is very similar, though, to the original and the Netflix version in terms of paint scheme. So it's not exactly reinventing the wheel too much. But at the end of the day, what up, David? At the end of the day, um, it is what it is, but I like it. I like the Matrix Bandolier. I hope that that Matrix, band Matrix comes off of the Bandolier and we could use that Matrix on our Voyager Dinobot that we're going to be getting in Wave 2, if not already for some people in stores. So you could uh, reenact Coming of the Fusers Part 1 and 2. Looks really good. Crystalux <clears throat> is the name of the fossilizer here. Really cool repaint. Looks way nicer than the original, especially the paint in the face under the skull mask. Unfortunately, I didn't do a blow up uh, of that. I should have, actually. A lot of paint on that face under the skull mask. Looks really cool in a lot of photo shoots of leaked images online of people that already got them from the factories. <clears throat> the only thing not shown in this image is they talked about how there is going to also be some Energon compound. What color it will be, we do not know. Last time it was black with the Siege spoiler pack with Ultra Magnus. So it's probably going to be maybe pink. I do not know. We don't know the color. Maybe the indication of the little uh, pink Energon in the bottom left there uh, is an indication of what it might be. But who knows? Who knows? We, we'll find out soon enough. I'm excited about it. Looks cool. I mean, it's not like a crazy spoiler or something. For all we know, it could be one of just like those Destiny cards. It could be just like an alternate future kind of thing. But it's still pretty exciting. And I know a lot of people who missed out will be able to... Oh, man. I missed uh, my cue there. Would be able to pick it up. I'm supposed to click there. There we go. <laughs> uh, next piece of news we have is that of the Plexio Micros. Uh, this is, was something that was showing up recently in Family Dollar, in General Dollar, and a lot of different places across the United States. No surprise, it uses, uses six of the Legendary Seven of Hasbro's recommended licensor characters. I only bring this up because these are showing up now in stores for $2.99 a piece. So if you're interested in picking these up, they're out there. They're very tiny, about two inches. And I feel that these are something that maybe you should pick it up now because if you get your Unicron or even that of your ARC playset in the near future, these would be pretty close to scale and would be fun to use with your display. Little tiny figures, non-transformable, very limited in what you get here. The Starscream obviously is missing quite a few paint. Soundwave doesn't have paint on his legs. Um, they are what they are for $2.99 for something that you would find at Family Dollar. But it's just something that has been showing up recently and people have been sharing photos of it. So, hey, something cool to, uh, to add to your collection. And uh, will probably be something that later on when the art comes out, it'll just make sense. It'll be kind of cool, don't you think? Yeah, kind of cool. 
Let's jump into some third-party stuff that was actually interesting to me. So Jizai Toys. Jizai Toys is a third-party CAD developer. Uh, Jizai is known for making so many ideas and designs and about 99% of them never coming to fruition in terms of actual product. But some of his ideas have come to reality, such as his masterpiece Wheelie. His, uh, I mean, his designs for for Cyclonus, I almost feel one for one were taken by Hasbro back in the day. And he's made so many cool, great ideas of fembots and stuff like that. He's pretty much showing how things could be done. Even his his version of Galvatron all those years ago, I feel there's a lot of inspiration from companies, third-party companies use their inspiration. And he showed here today a line of cassette bots that are triple changers that transform from cassette to robot mode to alt mode. And they showed here the Convoy and the Ultra Magnus. And I think they look absolutely fantastic. And it almost feels like something like, you know, like Hasbro made, Hasbro made everyone a Headmaster and Titan Masters. And then Hasbro made a whole bunch of characters that weren't pretenders, pretenders. And, you know, like I feel that, or Power Masters or, or stuff like that, or Titan Masters or Prime Masters or stuff like that. So I could always, like, it'd be cool, like, if one year we have, like, a theme is everyone's a cassette. <laughs> everyone's a cassette. So we have Convoy here, Optimus, and then we got, a, obviously, the Ultra Magnus repaint. I dig it a lot. I think they're really, they're really cute. I hope Jizai makes these a reality. Nice little cassette bots. You know, Blaster could have a mini Optimus and a mini Ultra Magnus in his chest. Pretty cool stuff. Um, we'll definitely see what happens in the future. Jizai, unfortunately, despite the fact that he's super talented, a lot of his product just never sees mass release, which is such a shame. Super talented dude. Just wanted to give a prop up to him. Speaking of super talented people, let's talk about Super 7. They just recently announced their next repaint of their Super Cyborg line, which is a 12-inch clear like you know you could open the chest and see how the inner workings of these cyborgs work they do it for both transformers and gi joe they do it also with the the bats and stuff like that from gi joe so obviously on the right there they did their original sound wave they did a clear repaint not too long after that and lo and behold what's the next one coming of course sound blaster now sound waves um original repaint came with laser beak untransformable and the clear one came with, I guess, a, we'll, we'll assume it's a clear laser beak because it was just a clear cassette. Uh, but, I mean, you could pretty much make it whoever you want it to be. Now, clearly the color scheme they're going for with this cassette is supposed to be Rat Bat, but you could see the shape and detail of a laser beak transformation. Obviously, these cassettes do not transform. But, I mean, we saw already what they did with Black Friday a couple of months ago where they did their Black Friday Black Repaint Bonanza with their Super 7 Reaction stuff. So no surprise they're going to do the Black Repaint Sound Blaster here with their with their Super Cyborg stuff. And hey, it's supposed to be colored like Rat Bat, the Laserbeak cassette, but I mean, the deco is still, <laughs> it's still Laserbeak. Anyone who owns a G1 Laserbeak knows exactly what I'm talking about, how it looks in, in alt mode and stuff. So you can see the shape there, but still pretty cool. Um, we don't have a price uh, or a pre-order date just yet, but if there's any indication and similarity to what was going on with these previous ones, there, it's probably going to be 75 bucks. So for some people, that might be a tough pill to swallow. But if you're a Soundwave fan, it's it's a cool little thing to have to, to see the inner workings of how the tape cassette, you know, Decepticon Communications Commander functions on the inside. Still pretty cool, a little pricey. But still pretty cool. Again, Super 7 is uh, a, a very different market of people that buy this kind of stuff. Uh, next up, let's talk about something that a lot of people were not talking about. And it's when we learned about Galvatron uh, this weekend, when we learned about him, there was something going on in the background and not a lot of people were talking about it. And it was that of a repaint of the Megatron Kingdom figure. And Kingdom Megatron had, I want to say it was in, I want to say it was in April of last, no, it wasn't in April. When was it? All I know is that there was a leak of an alternate head that someone got of Kingdom Megatron 
and it had a brand new face sculpt, and that right away led to people speculating that some kind of repaint was on its way. And then, of course, just a couple of days ago, we saw the leak of Galvatron here, and a very Beast Machines, Transformers, Dinobots, T-Rex colored Kingdom Megatron pieces splayed out all over. So it pretty much indicates that we're probably getting in the near future a a Kingdom T-Rex, I guess, maybe Generation Selects. We don't know yet. What's up, Aaron? We don't know yet what's happening, but something is coming. Something is coming. We don't know the distribution platform, but we do know that this is coming, and it's exciting because this is the first time in, wow, it's got to be at least 19 years until this since this character has been introduced. There's been a lot of different Beast Wars Megatron toys since then. Robot Masters, uh, the Cybertron kind of thing, which was done for the Beast Wars line. Uh, even the Masterpiece. Never got a T-Rex repaint, oddly enough, even though it's such an easy one. And, well, looks like uh, it's going to be happening now, so it will be exciting. I, I have a feeling, I could be wrong, but I feel this is going to be a Generation Selects thing. I just feel that that's kind of the right place for something like that. I don't see this being a Wave 3 case assortment leader with Galvatron. Like, you know, I don't see it like that. But, I mean, I could be wrong. Uh, there, there, it, it just, to me, like, I feel that this, this has the more vibe of something that would have been with, uh, with a Generation Selects kind of thing. But who knows? We'll find out soon enough. And speaking of Galvatron, let's talk about the purple elephant in the room that we learned about this weekend. And it is that of our Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom leader class Galvatron. Now, these images, from what people have been speculating, these were probably the images that Hasbro was going to show during their live stream in April. That's what we think because it's it kind of fits the vibe of what they've been doing in the past when they show off their product now through these Hasbro live streams. So these are probably slides from it that unfortunately leaked out from whoever that's going to be fired very soon. Um, but either way, uh, it looks great. It looks really, really good. Um, you know, I, the, 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 the same thing I've been saying over and over is that if, if people aren't satisfied with, let's say, how the purple looks or the use of the three millimeter pegs all over the figure, there's a lot of different uh, things that are still, at the end of the day, different from, let's say, his 1986 animation model, Fluoro Deary design and counterpart. But when it's all said and done, I still feel that the Studio Series 86 line is going to be around for a long time. And we'll probably see this character get a visit at some point. It could be this exact mold, could be a brand new mold. But either way, I still think it looks great. I'm very curious what else it's going to be doing. And what's even more exciting is another image surfaced recently. And this comes courtesy of Chris XV. He um, cleaned up this image here. And we learned that we're getting even a Matrix of Leadership accessory that will hang around his neck. Actually, oddly enough, I'm not wearing my Matrix of Leadership accessory around my neck. Or I just put it in shot there. A nice little Matrix of Leadership uh, accessory that could hang around his neck, re reenact the uh, 86 movie. Really cool stuff. Might even be tied to Kingdom and its storyline, too, for all we know. Might uh, be a little battle between Megatron and Galvatron on who gets to uh, keep the Matrix. But either way, really cool stuff. Looks really good. And the last thing I want to cover, and you, we could see it all, already in the uh, previous image here, was that of his ships and the revenge so I talked about this on my Twitter. Uh, the two little guns that Galvatron comes with are patterned after his ship in the 86 movie, The Revenge, as it was called. It was the ship that Unicron gave him after his reformatting. Now, Unicron.com with the Lucas brothers did an interview with Hasbro and Hasbro talked about how the stand that comes with Unicron, that you have the little Rodimus, the little Galvatron, and the Autobot shuttle on it, that there is plans for extra slots 
on this, and you could see it really with the in-person shot here on in the middle, uh, there's little extra slots for future ships. Future ships, and I mean, it looks like they're probably going to maybe give us a junk ship, maybe a Quintesson ship, but we do know that using that 3 millimeter peg that's used to make Galvatron's gun hold in his hand, we also have now the Revenge that could probably plug in there. So if you're someone who bought Unicron, uh, Galvatron's probably going to be a must to pick up now because that means that you want to have your little revenge ship on the side there. Looks really good. It looks really good. And it's for sure it's the revenge. I, I was having a discussion with some people. Some people were saying that it looks more like um, G1 Megatron's chrome gun. It's not. It's not. You could see like the side pilers, like the little thrusters on the side of the ship there in the animation model on the bottom right excuse me, on the bottom left, you could see it, they're, they're present on the, the guns here. So that's clearly what they're going for. And a fun little fact, Fleur O'Deary, who designed this, uh, he said that originally the ship was actually intended to be upside down. And when they animated it, they did it the other way around. So, yep. <laughs> Sometimes a little bit of a mistake goes a long way, and next thing you know, it's canon forever. So, uh, yeah, that's that. That is that. And, uh... That's pretty much it for the news this week, but it was a lot of big stuff, and we're probably going to learn more uh, later this week. Someone just mentioned that a clear image just surfaced, so I'll have to check that out uh, after the stream. It looks like it's going to be a quiet... Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it'll be a quiet news week after all of this. Last week was crazy. This week was crazy. So maybe coming up we'll see something else. Oh, we got Roman has joined the... Transformer Slag membership crew. Thank you, Roman, for joining at the Minicon level. Um, might as well mention also... Oh, what up, Damon? Also want to mention uh, just our sponsor quickly and then some news, some uh, nice news. So first we'll mention our sponsor, Symbiote Studios. Symbiotestudios.com, our plush, our t-shirts, and our pins that we have here on the podcast. So Symbiote Studios does official Hasbro Transformer plush. Be sure to check them out. And we actually have some new images. So first I was showing this teaser. This is a beautiful one. So we were recently told that March 22nd, this Monday, Grimlock and Starscream will be available to buy and join you. So anyone who's been waiting to finally get Starscream, to finally get the first official Star Scream plush, the very first one, very first official Star Scream plush, symbiotestudios.com forward slash transformers. I just go to symbiotestudios.com because they got a lot of other cool stuff too. You could check that out. Uh, but yeah, awesome, 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 really cool. I'm excited about it. It looks really cool. Finally, get a, a nice Star Scream. And also, if you're a video game guy. They started working with Tripwire, and they're doing the line of Maneater stuff, so you can get your little shark pup from Maneater. If you aren't familiar with Maneater, it's a shark RPG game using AAA quality graphics, and you're pretty much a baby shark that has to grow to an adult shark, and you have to survive in the wild eating humans or other fish. And then you pretty much level up and gain experience and become a beefy shark it reminds me a lot of of the old game jaws by ljn for nintendo or even in the super nintendo era there was a game called evo back in the day where you kind of also had to evolve from just a little minnow into a beefy kind of shark thing so uh, pretty cool stuff check them out symbiotestudios.com go pick up starscream and grimlock and if not go pick up all their other cool transformer product and of course even other video game stuff you even have gi joe and you got shovel knight a lot of cool stuff going on there again symbiote studios another thing i want to announce jaws d who's part of the podcast has recently recently proposed to his girlfriend good for him Good for him. I'm very proud of him. Um, for people that are sharp-eyed, yes, that is a Pokeball. Yes, that is a Pokeball. <laughs> Don't hate the players. Hate the game. <laughs> so good for him. 
Very proud of him. Wish him all congratulations. And uh, hopefully we'll see him very soon. He's probably going to be a lot more busier now. But either way, congratulations. Um, so let's jump into what we got this week. Uh, I got two things. Um, one was finally my Botropolis rescue mission came in the mail from Amazon.USA. I was playing it safe. I wasn't going to go through Canada. So yay, my zone base-esque kind of MicroMaster set has arrived. Again, I'm not crazy about a lot of these, but the MicroMaster ones really speak to me. So I bought it. Love it. Looks great. Can't wait to open it up, take some photos. Also, for people that are part of the Discord and that are part of the... the uh, we have a special section where we share deals and all kinds of crazy stuff that go on sale in the Transformer world. Um, Hasbro recently has went on mega clearance on all of their old rescue bot items, whether it be rescue bots or rescue bots Academy, everything is like on 25 to 50% off and Walmart has followed suit with it and it's just been liquidating all their stuff. So if you want rescue bot stuff, I mean, I don't know if it'll if it'll still be on sale. This was something I announced last week on our Discord, and that's why you should be part of the Patreon. Plug, plug. But so stuff was on sale, so I went out and I bought uh, Heat Wave that turns into a Formula One car. I love my Formula Ones, and specifically red Formula Ones. So I got the Heat Wave one. This was after taxes. It was nine bucks Canadian, so it probably comes about like six fifty American. Original MSRP retail, I want to think, was $14.99 were these. So if you like rescue bots, find them in the wild right now at Walmart. They're on sale. Pretty awesome stuff. And uh, you can get them cheap because I think Hasbro is going to be rolling out a whole new bunch of rescue bot stuff in the new year. And it's not going to have a TV show, but they're just going to have new products. So I think they kind of want to liquidate all that old product that's based off of a TV show. That's what I think. I mean, I don't know what, what the game is, but something's going on where all the rescue bot stuff is on clearance. I don't know if it still is, but it definitely is. And the last thing that I got, and this is non-transformer related, but I just got it uh, in the secondary market and it's a biker mice from Mars puzzle. <laughs> I love Biker Mice from Mars and any Biker Mice from Mars merchandise. It's 48 pieces, extra large. So I guess it's not going to be very complicated for me. I guess I'll be able to finish it. 48 pieces. I don't know. I don't know. What's crazy about this is the box art that's used on this is actually one for one uh, taken from their first issue of their comic book by Marvel. And then they kind of simplified it. Rock and ride. Ride free, citizens. That's pretty cool. Love my biker mice. So that's it, more or less. So let's uh, open it up to super chat questions. We got more people there becoming members. What's going on here? Oh, Damon Bat also became a mini con recruit. Thank you, Damon, for joining. Um, yeah, it was a pretty, a pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool week this week. Got a lot of, uh, got a lot of Decepticon leader news. So I probably should have wore a Decepticon shirt then in the emblem. Let's plug it again. Oh, get the pins from Symbiote Studios. Get the Decepticon set. Probably should have worn a Decepticon one. Oh, well, missed opportunity. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. So it's uh, a lot of stuff. We a lot of stuff we're getting like rapid fire, rapid fire, rapid fire stuff, man. Like, I feel like we're just going to have no news to talk about at some point. Oh, we got two super chats already, so let's jump into those. So, Downright Superb wants to know, the new Spoiler Siege Megatron is the fourth retail version of that mold. You think they can milk any other mold that much? Maybe a fourth Earthrise Optimus. Man, you know what? What was... Obviously, outside of Seeker Jets. Outside of Seeker Jets, who gets, like, the most repaints? Because I know, like, a lot of, like... A lot of that Cybertron stuff, Cybertron, Energon, and everything... I know a lot of those got a lot of repaints throughout the years. Like, like that hot shot mold, like that first, 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 like hot shot mold, man, you can't even see it. It's all the way up there though. But that first hot shot mold, like original Japanese one, which has the light inside 
power link version, Japanese power link version, which had different paints. So that's four right there. They did a smoke screen repaint. They did, did they do a shattered glass one? I don't remember. Like that's five right there just with an Armada mold. And I know I'm forgetting something. I know I'm forgetting one. But they, they, they all, look, you gotta, there's engineering involved. There's R&D. They need to get their money back. They really do. People tend to forget that, you know, the golden age of G1, right? The beginning of G1, 1984, 1985. Hasbro went into 1984 and 1985 with all their product line being repaints and repackages of pre-existing material. So in a lot of ways, the money was kind of already made on like Convoy, well, at the time, Battle Convoy and, and you know, Porsche Robo and all that stuff. All the money was made already from the Diaclone and Microman era of a couple years just prior that when they put out that product, it's not like Hasbro's like, oh, well, we got to make this money back. If anything, it was just buying probably the licensing for the molds and stuff from Takara or whatever their relationship was, especially back then in 83 and 84 when this whole thing started. But, I mean, they're always going to melt. They're always going to milk the molds. It's always going to be like that. It's always, always, always going to be like that. And it doesn't look, we got a new Starscream Seeker mold from the core class. You know, that's going to be re repainted into every color of the rainbow. You know that like, you know, the, the Dino Bot, we just got a Voyager. It's probably going to get the Grimlock color scheme. It's probably going to get maybe a purple color scheme like Beast Wars Neo. Who knows what? Who knows? There's so many things that could come from that. Like someone said here, the Datsun brothers, you know, the Datsun brothers, the, the Lambo brothers. You know, there's, there's certain characters that uh, almost every character now kind of has a built-in other character. Like, it's like Bumblebee, it used to be Cliff Jumper, but now you have Glyph, now you have Tap Out, now you have Bug Bite, so right away that's five right there if you don't count. You know, also a G2 Gold Chrome, or if you want to do uh, Bumper, or if you want to do, um, I know I'm forgetting something, like if you want to do like just a traditional Black Evil repaint, which they did do that too at one point. So like, even something like Bumblebee has like built-in stuff if you want to. And characters like Jazz now have it with Ricochet, AKA Stepper, and then doing a gold repaint. When you think of like Brawn, you got, you got Outback. When you think of, I'm just like going through like Ironhide, you got Ratchet. And then of course, you know, the Diaclone and the movie repaints. And I could go on and on. It's, it's the, the culture of that has been created now just because now when you do a Wheeljack toy, you got to do another, another shot of that mold. And you got to have something. And that's why Exhaust exists, even though he's existed for years. Uh, we, but thank you for the question. We got another super chat from Joseph Ritter. <laughs> and Joseph says here, Now that Jaws D's life is over, are we ever going to get another awkward co-host to go with your alpha mighty man personality? Grimlock needs a wheelie. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know. Uh, Jaws D I've known practically my entire life. And that'd be a really tough co-host to, uh, to replace. That really would be. He's still, he's still, he's still going to be on the show. It's just, it's been, his life has been so busy now more than ever since he's moved out. So it's been tough to kind of work stuff out, but he still shows up once in a while. He'll make a cameo here and there. Uh, my schedule is all over the place. It would have to be a co-host that really, really has a lot of freedom. Let's put it this way. Um, and would have the same energy that me and Jaws D has had since, since we were kids you know, to play off of each other. But thank you for the question, Joseph. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, look, going back to like, I want to just say with the repaint thing is Hasbro more than ever now, I feel because toy sales probably are not as good as they used to be. I think that there's just even more of an emphasis on the need to make something and then plan. I feel like now more than ever, when they make a character, they already plan the repaint when they're making that character. And I mean, obviously some of them are no brainers that me and you could guess, but in general, they just, they plan it right away. I mean, we've seen it many times where instructions for characters come out and they have a different head on it. And it's a spoiler for a future repaint. Happens many times. We got another super chat question from JM Autobot, and he wants to know, I'm not familiar with the Japanese story after 1986 movie. Did Galvatron ever get fully severed from Unicron, or did they forever stay connected? Well, the belief is, is that, so, it, and we're talking Japanese continuity here. So when Unicron died, 
um, his energy or his Almo energy uh, gushed out of him and went all over the universe. And that was kind of, I want to say, the end of Unicron. But then they had it that Unicron was still kind of alive in his head, in like his floating head around the planet. So even though his energy dispersed, he still was kind of alive. But he didn't have control over Galvatron anymore because if he would have, I think he would have still exerted that power over him instead of having to use like Starscream and stuff. Like it, again, Ghost in the Machine and stuff like that. So season three episodes for anyone that hasn't seen them. I think that their connection was severed. I think that whatever power he did have over him was lost when his dark energy left. And that's all stuff that's been retconned later on due to Sakamoto stuff, due to Beast Wars Neo and Beast Wars Second, kind of explaining when he exploded all that green stuff that we, we just interpreted as, you know, fu you know, space fire or explosions. And what really happened in continuity, let me just pull it up here. Uh, you can thank Kisplay for that. So... There was a episode zero manga of Kiss Play, and they explained. Here, I'll even show you some pages of it. Let's go, let's go. Where are we? I have to pull it up. Here we go. So, when Hot Rod got the Matrix, became Rodimus Prime. We all know what happened next. They had a little scuffle. This is the end of the road Galvatron. They beat each other up. He throws Unicron out of... Excuse me, he throws Galvatron out of Unicron. But what happens is, is Unicron, uh, Galvatron floated all the way to Japan and killed these poor, this poor little family. He crashed in Japan like a supernova and killed everyone. So that was essentially the story of how Kiss Play started, which was because Rodimus shot Galvatron out of Unicron and he crashed on Earth and killed almost everyone in a large part of Japan, that created the EDC, the Earth Defense. And let me just pull this up. Got to be careful with these Kiss Play pages because it's all nice and dandy like that until you get to the other side. So... <laughs> But that's where you get to these guys. Got to find one page that isn't going to get me flagged. Woo! Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. What am I going to do with you, Yuki Ashima, who drew this? Either way, point is, is that uh, Galvatron then crashed on Earth. He got used by the Legion. He got shot back in the space. He landed on planet Char. He got bathed in the lava. He went crazy. And the rest is history with that. Um, this manga is ridiculously tough to find and it's never been translated. One day I'll probably translate it or something, but it was sold at Wonder Festival, I want to say 2008, it was, 2008 or 2009, by Yuki Yashima at his booth. And it was the prequel book to be a companion book with the other manga compilation. And it's the same thing. If you read it the American way, you get some Transformer stuff. And if you read it the other way, you get some kiss play kind of stuff. So, hope that answers your question a little bit. And you got to see a little, a uh, little bit of rare stuff there. A lot of people haven't ever seen those mangas. I don't know anyone that's really ever, uh, ever shared that online. But a lot of weird stuff. But kiss play, the one thing I got to give credit to kiss play is that it existed to kind of like fill the gaps with uh, Generation One continuity and history. And uh, to kiss play's credit, again, like. They invented the the G1 timeline, you know, like the official G1 timeline with, hey, in 2006, all of this happened. In 2005, all that happened. In 2000, this, like, they created the, the official timeline of everything that happened in between and uh, explain everything. <laughs> so much crazy stuff. So much crazy stuff. Remember that time when Wheelie touched a little girl's pajama uh, panties and then got his face smashed in? Jesus Christ, look at that. Japan. Japan. Japan is interesting. Uh, anyways. 
Dear Proto, what do you consider the absolute most cringe moment of the G1 cartoon? Um, probably not in the G1 cartoon, but uh, I, you know, I love the 86 movie. But I always feel if we could have just removed that junkie on dance scene, I don't know. You know, like every time I go like, oh man, 86 movie is hardcore. It's amazing. And what you gonna do? Dare to be stupid. And then you just start dancing. And I'm just like, if we could just cut that out. Just take that scene and just, just throw that out of the movie. Go straight to, uh, you know, fix uh, Ultra Magnus and give me the ship if you get trip. You know, give me something like that. Uh, but if, if, I don't know, from the G1 cartoon, it's, there's a lot of, uh, the stream has been mon has been demonetized, has been demonetized, I'll tell you that right now. Um, so you better thank me, you better thank me for the insanity that I just shared right now, that isn't online. Uh, a lot of weird stuff in this collection, let me tell you, let me tell you, a lot of weird stuff. The only like weird, like, you know, I have like a kiss play section up there, so there's all the kiss play stuff. And it's like, I, I always say, like, you know, if, if ever, like, the police break into my house, that's going to be the section that they're going to be like, what is going on there? <laughs> Either way. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? I'm trying to see here. Uh, hey, Proto, does Hasbro still have pi pipes trademarked? Um, I want to say they do because they did... They did that that class of 85 or class of 86 Creo set. I'm trying to remember what else. I'd have to check. I'd have to check. But there's definitely something that probably kept it in rotation. Definitely wasn't the, uh, collector, cl uh, the collector card game, that's for sure. Um, did you get a chance to watch the new Justice League? No, I have not. That was trending like crazy on Twitter. Uh, I have not got a chance to watch it. I saw the original. It was okay. I mean, I don't hate on it. Uh, I was paying attention to Ryan Reynolds, fellow Canadian, who was re-watching uh, Green Lantern for the first time. Uh, he recorded it, but he never actually sat back and watched the movie. Um, man, that was a bad movie. <laughs> I did not like Green Lantern. Hal Jordan's not even the best Green Lantern. There's so much other better Green Lanterns. Kyle's better. You know, uh, John Stewart is better. There's so much better Green Lanterns. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? What's the next question? Hey, Pro, I've heard various things about a new Beast Wars comic being a 12 issue only. Is that when IDW is likely to see if they want to commit or try for a long run? Well, a lot of times now with a lot of books, um, not just Transformers, but comic books in general now, because the industry is not as lucrative as it used to be the comic book industry it's a lot safer to kind of just do limited run stuff go like hey we're going to do four issues and we'll see what happens we're going to do 12 issues and we'll see what happens i would like it if beast wars is ongoing i would like it if it gets the sales and they could continue telling this story but i really think that josh and the crew have a beginning middle and end planned i i really do i think that this is this is something that's also perfectly tied with what's going on with the Netflix series. And what I mean tied me like, you know, Beast Wars stuff. We have the reissue Beast Wars toy line coming. We have the current Kingdom stuff on shelves. We have the Netflix series that's coming soon. We have the Beast Wars comic book. And we have the Beast Alliance movie that's being rumored. Uh, it's just a corn cornucopia of Beast-related stuff. And I think that the comic book series being 12 issues, a.k.a. a year, kind of fits into just keeping that hype and flavor going until the next thing as much as i would love to see it being an ongoing and i really enjoyed issues one and two three's not out yet i don't think my comic book guy let me know if three's out yet but i know t one and two i've read um don't don't mention any spoilers in issue two some people might not have read it yet but it's a it's a really good book really good book i would like it if it's ongoing but it's just the comic book industry is weird right now it really is a lot of books, they, they, you know, they start with the intention of being ongoing and then they get canceled. And so they only go for like a year or like six months, sometimes only six issues. It's, it's, it's tough right now. That's why you should go to your local comic book store. I understand we're in a pandemic and all the craziness. And I even shouldn't have said that P word, but, um, just go, go to your local comic book store and, uh, support your local comic book store and pick up some books, pick up some books, man, not even transform books, just pick up books. 
get some back issues too. Put some money back into them. They're struggling right now, these guys. They had to move free comic book day. Free comic book day was always in May. Now it's in August. They've had to move it. That's how bad it is. Hopefully we'll be able to enjoy free comic book day in August. I hope so. Hey, Brodo, why did they make two different deep cover toys within a month? Um, one to be accurate to the original e-hobby, one to give people an opportunity to pick it up in retail, but not make people who bought the Generation Selects one feel like they got duped. That's probably the easiest way to say it. I'm pretty sure also Walmart probably had some kind of contractual agreement where they wanted to have some interesting characters in their Siege line. Not Siege line, uh, uh, Netflix line. Uh, I don't know the paperwork, <laughs> so I can't answer that question, but they're both... You know, they're both exclusives in different kinds of ways. One is an exclusive that Hasbro is in complete control of because it's an exclusive to their Hasbro Pulse, and they decide that. The other one being an exclusive to Walmart, which is part of what, however they deal with their contracts and how they want their exclusives to be. Walmart has been pushing hard to get as much Transformer product exclusively to their location because there's carryover and people buy product when they go over there. You buy some Transformers, you pick up a quart of milk, you get a brand new T-shirt, you get a you know, a, a, a chocolate bar in the impulse aisle on the way out to your self-checkout, boom. It was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it for them. Uh, Michael Coombe says, let's hope uh, that the IDW Beast Wars is just Beast Wars Season 1, and then maybe uh, be, they'll do Trans Metals in a sequel series. I hope so, Michael. I do. I, I love what Josh is doing right now in the crew. I'm really happy about those books. Um, I just really hope that it, it finds success. I, there's a great website I visit a lot called Comicron, literally like Comicron, and they keep track of, uh, of comic book sales all the time. And I always try to see, like, what are the numbers? How is the comic book industry doing during the craziness with the big V and everything? And it's been tough. Sales have been pretty much as low as they've ever been. I mean, you're going to always have Batman and Spider-Man and X-Men. They're always going to be selling those books. Those books always do well. But, you know, gone are the days when the, the smaller second tier books were able to make any kind of money and stuff. It's it's a different era now, uh, more than ever. And I understand, you know, people read online digitally and stuff, but that doesn't help the comic book stores. And I'll always want to support the comic book stores before anything else. You know, local stores, it's it's just the lifeblood of the community. Call me old fashioned. You know, I rather have a book in my hand. Uh, Proto, any recommendations for what paint to use on a figure? I want to touch up Kingdom Dinobot. Unfortunately, I have not gotten Kingdom Dinobot yet, so I wouldn't know what to say, to be honest. Uh, I haven't seen any of those guys yet locally in Canada, the Wave 2 stuff. Maybe it's just been picked up before I see it in Walmart, but I haven't seen it yet. It's probably already showed up and maybe someone bought it. What do you want to touch up exactly? Do you want to like make his beast mode look more clean i guess because of his legs being very obvious is there something that doesn't really skew what i would suggest is look at the uh the masterpiece toy for any kind of inspiration if you're looking to make him look really show accurate because i have the masterpiece one and i i love that thing again shout out to ian mcrobbie for hooking me up with that one beautiful figure beautiful beautiful figure Beautiful figure. Hey, Proto, why are the early Beast Wars figures not accurate to their animation models? Is it like G G1 all over again? Beast Wars was put together in late 94, early 95, more than a year before Mainframe Entertainment uh, put, uh, you know, I guess we could say pen to paper, but uh, mouse to mouse pad. And if you actually look, the extras of the Beast Wars Rhino DVD box set, the very first animation models of beast wars for the cartoon were actually based on the toy counterparts and then much like g1 they just felt that's ah, too complicated simplify it and they did like a fleuro deary thing where they simplified it and those are the designs we have today it's again toys came first and show came after and they wanted the show to just look nicer that's that's pretty much the 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 simple part of it really some of the characters looked like their show counterparts some of them like rhinox those mutant heads just kind of got in the way and really didn't uh look a lot like their character models but you know they the the general i guess spirit was there but as the show progressed and they knew that there had to be synergy between toy line and tv show look at the trans metals 
Look at the Transmetal 2s. Look at the Fusors. Those are more accurate to their screen counterparts. And then Beast Machines happened. <laughs> Beast Machines actually has a similar story, but I'll get into that in the future. I actually have a, a listener question for the Patreon that uh, talks about Beast Machines that we'll get to into one day. Uh, Proto, have you ever heard anything about why Wave 3 Netflix Deluxes aren't available online? Um, I didn't hear anything about that yet. I would assume it probably has something to do with the fact that they're Walmart exclusives and probably just Hasbro trying to honor that exclusivity before shipping it out to other retailers and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure there's like a, a date, like they could only, you know, maybe like Walmart has it exclusive for X amount of time and then it shows up on the Hasbro pulse website in limited quantity. And then they're able to get cases out there. Sadly, I think the only way you could get it from another, uh, another person would obviously have to be in the secondary market or like if, you know, if BBTS bought a whole bunch from retail and then, flips it to you but you should wait you know get get it at uh, the lowest possible price for yourself don't just pay some secondary market dude who's marking you up and trying to uh, take advantage of you it hurts everybody it hurts everyone beast wars issue three release date april 7th thank you michael i knew it wasn't out yet because usually my uh, comic book guy tells me when there's stuff in my pull bin uh, hey, Proto, any update on the bots you received a couple weeks ago? Well, I did open up my um, my Botropolis, not Botropolis, my Micron MicroMaster pack. And if you look on my Instagram and on my Twitter, I took some photos of that. And uh, they were awesome. They were delicious, to say the least. So uh, really, really cool. I love, I love, again, those mask ones. You know, as a kid, I loved masks, so... I jumped on those right away. Again, I love the MicroMaster. Same thing, I got this, the Botropolis set. I'm going to open it up. You're going to, anyone who's following my Twitter, you're probably going to see some photos sometime this week of me messing with those and having a good old time. I think I post those on the on the community tab in the in the podcast too. I'm not too sure. Uh, where are we at with the super chat questions? Do you do any army building? Um, The closest I've ever done, uh, honestly, in army all the transformer stuff i have outside of obviously army building that i can't control because that's how they're sold because bacon used to do some army building sets uh the only time i ever did army building was twice in my life once for transformers and once for another toy line um when transformers prime you probably won't be able to see it it's more down there uh doesn't pivot down unfortunately uh when transformers prime came out um you had like the viacons like the Decepticon Viacon drones. So they had the, I guess it was the Cyberverse scale, they called it, whatever you want to call it, the Legend scale. I bought a whole bunch of the the car ones and then the Jet the jet Viacons and the car Viacons. Like I bought three of each and then I like did a little army building kind of thing there. And the only other time I ever done army building was there's a toy line called Botsmaster. Very obscure 90s TV show. I love that show. Um, and with Botsmaster, I was army building the three a's which were ridiculously not popular and when i visited kb toys when kb toys still was a thing back in the day uh they were blowing them out at a dollar a piece so bought a few extra a few extra three a's for my three a army builder collection and anyone that watches bots master the three a's are like <laughs> they're like the the flunkies they get destroyed very easily by the dozens by the boys as they're called so did you see that new photo kingdom galvatron has a matrix of leadership yes i did sir let me just pull that up for people that are showing up to the stream late uh this is the this is the image that i have that was cleaned up by xv braun um yeah i saw there's a supposedly there's a new image that's kicking around supposedly um i'll probably see that after the stream and maybe i'll uh see if i could work it into the news maybe this week What's a KB Toys? Oh boy, sweet summer child. This is coming from a Canadian that never had a KB Toys around his area. KB Toys was probably uh, the best place to get toys back in the day when they were old. Uh, they were a mall-based kind of toy store where you had to go to uh, mega malls and they'd have their own little spot in a mall. But because of their limited space, they would get they would get the same stock that a Toys R Us would get or a Walmart. But they had such a quick turnover that when stock got old, because there was not enough space, they would liquidate it. 
And Bacon even did an homage to KB Toys back in the day when they did their Machine Wars set. They had the little sticker with the price, and then it was slashed with the other price because KB Toys, KB Toys toys back in the day were always on clearance. And there were so many good deals to be had back in the day. As a Canadian who didn't have KB Toys around, it was one of the things I was looking forward to seeing the most whenever I would go cross the border into New York. I, every time I would see a KB Toys, I was so excited because you only see it, I would only go maybe once a year, but I knew something was going to be on Mega Clearance. I would buy stuff, even if I didn't want it because it was so cheap. They had like the Resident Evil Toy Biz line. And I was like, I don't need a Jill Valentine figure, but it's 50 cents. Sure, why not? Oh, X-Men versus Street Fighter, you know, crossover figures by Toy Biz, a dollar. Ken versus, I think it was Sabretooth. Sure, why not? Oh, Mega Man versus Iron Man. Okay, a dollar. The, the Mortal Kombat, I think it was uh, Dark, not, what was it called? Dark Ascension Line or something, whatever they called it. The one with Reptile and Scorpion and, and Snoop Saibot. 50 cents. They would blow out so many toy lines that sometimes I'd be stupid not to leave with them. Because even if I didn't want them, I could sell them. <laughs> you know, like it's just, I could buy it. If I don't like it, I'll just be like, okay, I bought it for 50 cents. What's my overhead? I could sell it for a dollar. So they were amazing. They really were. I, I miss them so much. But that was the problem is that their their business model just didn't work for them in that you know, they had to move stock so quickly that their maximum profit was always hurt by the fact that they couldn't hold on to inventory very long and they were always blowing it out. And when you're selling Toy Biz, Marvel stuff for 50 cents, I'm pretty sure they're not making profit. They're probably taking a loss on it. Um, and probably some people know exactly what I'm talking about. I see here with those those Toy Biz X-Men Street Fighter sets. I love those things. Sent you the pick. Oh, I'm not opening anything right now, Larry. I can't. I have to keep the podcast like this, otherwise everything will crash. <laughs> I'll take a look at everything afterwards, for sure. Dear Proto, what's your favorite e hobby repaint? Mine is Magnificus. Well, Magnificus is probably one of the best because it comes with that Microman figure. Uh, it's definitely up there because that Microman figure is pretty awesome. I have that one. Um, never really thought about that one. I'd have to say. What's a really good one? What's a really, really good one? I mean, hey, E-Hobby gave us Sunstorm. And I mean, look what came from that. Like the first ever Sunstorm was E-Hobby. So if it wasn't for E-Hobby, think about that one for a second. You know, like, you know, E-Hobby gave us Holler. E-Hobby gave us Ditrius. E-Hobby gave us uh, Road Rage. So there's a lot of key characters that we celebrate today because of E-Hobby. But I'll, I'll go with, I mean, Sunstorm from the beginning. And I mean, you can barely see him all the way there. That's my, my E-Hobby section is over here. It's kind of hard to see, but, you know, I love E-Hobby. I miss them. They, they need to do more stuff. But uh, that's part one is the company. They don't uh, do that much anymore with Takara, unfortunately. Uh, Proto, do you think Beast Wars 2 Thrustor has a chance of getting updated with a new figure release for the Kingdom of I think so. That Thrustor is one of those examples where you just got to retool. You just got to retool a little bit. You don't, they don't have to worry about engineering and transformation. I think, honestly, keep in mind, guys, like, just, just use history. Think of everything that came out in Siege, right? Think of every single mold we got in Siege. Chromia... So I'm just going to look over while I say all this. Chromia, Sideswipe, you know, Ratchet, the whole, all of those dudes. All of those freaking dudes. Think about everything that we got in Siege. And how every single one of those molds got at least three or four repaints. Even like, you know, the, the Siege Ironhide. When it became, it came Crosshairs, it became Ratchet. You know, like, already three out of that. Uh, and now we have even that Quintesson one that's coming soon. So, like, think of all of those. I'm just, I'm just turning my head to look at my Siege display. And then you look at Brunt and the repaints that came from it and everything. But what I'm trying to get at is whatever we have right now in Kingdom, look at it and get ready because they're going to use it. They're going to use those molds. They're not going to waste that Beast Wars Megatron. They're not going to waste that Cheetor. They're not going to waste that, that Air Razor. They'll think of something. We can't think of something. 
they'll think of something. They'll do some kind of repaint. For sure. Hey, Proto, did you ever get Generation Select's Bug Bite? Unfortunately not, because it's Generation Select's and they don't like shipping to Quebec. Any Generation Select stuff that I do get is because once in a while, Toys R Us or EB Games, which is GameStop here in Canada, uh, will get dead stock of it. So that's usually how I get my stuff. Although the problem is they are ridiculously, ridiculously overpriced. So sometimes I bite the bullet, like in the case of um, Modulator Grease Pit. I, uh, I had to get him because I loved that color scheme and that, you know, the, the mold. So I had to buy that one. Had to buy it. It was so cool. So I overpaid for him, but I loved it. I loved it. It was worth it. The, the new one that I'm kind of worried about now is Transmutate. That's going to be one that's going to be like, when that shows up, I don't know. I'm going to probably want to pick it up. I might bite the bullet might bite the bullet hasbro didn't do g1 kingdom inferno just to please the fans has also probably repaint plans of course of course of course if you're going to do either that fire truck or that hauling truck you know that there's the repaints are built in you know it there's going to be if you did inferno first you're going to have number two you're going to have your your grapple you're going to have probably art fire as some kind of generation selects or some kind of e-hobby thing or some kind of Japanese exclusive, you're going to have hauler, you know, as again, as some kind of exclusive. And then Hasbro still figured out a way to take like, like back in the day when they did that generations Inferno, they took that mold and they called it hot shot and uh, not hot shot, hot spot from the, from the, um, from the protect bots, you know, they find a way to repaint it, and then they did it again. They did it as pyro and a botcon exclusive. I know, like, I'm looking at it right now. They, they did so many times. They figure out ways. They figure out ways every time. We got another super chat question from Dream Out There. Or is it Dream? Yeah, Dream Out Here. Dream Out Here. Yeah. <laughs> Dream Out Here with a beautiful dog in his thumbnail. I'm a big dog person. I have Unicron. Took 30 minutes to transform him for the first time. Shoulder ratchets are scary. Yes, they are. Click, click, click. Um, but they're also very strong plastic, a very strong ABS, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, this is more intense than YouTube than YouTubers have him seen. Seem scary transform. Tra that scary transform. I think what he's trying to say is this is more intense than YouTubers of him seem. Scary transformation. Well, I have one coming in the mail. I don't know when it's going to be here. If you uh, saw, I recently did on Twitter, I posted all the smallest Unicron stuff. In fact, there's one right there. That's the uh, Energon McDonald's Unicron. Um, I have one coming. When I get him in the mail, I'll, I'll put a nice little seat here. And he'll uh, do the podcast with us one day. He'll uh, give his two cents. Uh, I'm still kind of worried uh, because I want to be able to have him in both modes. I'm going to probably have him displayed in robot mode here for the first few weeks, and then I'll I'll put him away in the big boy display when that time comes. I already have space planned for him, imagine. But the hype is real, man. The hype is real. Uh, where are we at? But thank you for the super chat question. Dream out here. Dreamers out here. It's dreamers out here. Man, I'm bad today. I am bad today. Sorry about that. Alex wants to know, dear Proto Man, would you also like to see Kingdom Dinobot retool repaint into Neo Hardhead? I think, bro, I'm telling you, like, that mold. Look, it's a Voyager scale. They put the money in. They put the time. They're going to... We're going to see that mold. We are going to see that Dynamo, Dinobot mold for the next three years. We will. Look, how many Siege molds are we still seeing today? Siege was like two, three years ago. Siege was two, three years ago. And we just had now a spoiler box set with a Siege mold in it. So trust me. Trust me. We are going to be seeing those molds for a while. And they're going to be used in all kinds of stuff that you could easily predict. Maybe some stuff that will be unexpected. But it's going to happen. It's going to freaking happen. For sure. For sure. Uh, where are we at? 
Hey, Proto, was Smokescreen as fragile as some people made it out to be? Mine isn't. I transformed them once, but because of what people said, I was actually being careful. It didn't break. I'm not saying it couldn't have. I just didn't break it. Um, he seems fine. He seems fine. He's in the display right now. I kind of wanted I wanted to take some photos of him with, um, with Barricade because I have the Siege Barricade to like kind of compare the two, but I didn't do that photo shoot. I'm looking at them right now in the display. But he seems fine. He seems cool. Shout out to Michael for hooking me up with him. But uh, I don't know. I do not know. We got another super chat question from G Dreamers out here. I'm going to get it right this time. I mean, as a whole, he is a lot more intense than he seems in reviews. Not sure many times I will transform him. Epic is the only word for it. Well, I'll never forget the very first time I got the original the original Fort Max over there. When I got the original Fort Max, 1987 version, who's still probably... I mean, I haven't gotten Unicron yet, but this guy is still probably the heaviest Transformer ever made because he has a die-cast core there. Um, when I got the original Fort Max for the first time, I remember... like I, This was back in the day before Twitter. I remember just going like... Typing on the boards going like, it's like transforming a small child. Like It was just like you're wrestling it. And it was just, and it doesn't has a, as intense a transformation, but it's like crack, 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 click, 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 this big, heavy thing. So I could only imagine something that has way more joints and articulation is probably just as crazy. And he's bigger than Fort Max. He's bigger. He's the biggest transformer ever made, as he should be, because he's the biggest anything. So, I mean, he's going to be awesome. He's going to be awesome. I can't wait to get him because I feel that's going to be such a bookend for so many Transformer collectors because I feel that Hasbro's never going to do something like that again. I don't think we'll ever see something as big or as crazy. And even Hasbro said to really honor this, this thing, they're not going to do a re-release. So this is a really big bookend for a lot of collectors to kind of get that one last thing. We got another super chat question from the legendary Michael Koo. And Michael Koo wants to know, Proto Man, I love the articulated hands on Earthrise Kingdom Optimus Prime and 1986 Studio Series Hot Rod. Why doesn't Hasbro make these a standard with TF hands? Extra parts, extra pins, extra price, my friend. The more pieces, the more they have to pay. The second you have a McDonald's toy and you have... A molded in plastic colors. This is, look, this is a McDonald's toy. This is Transmetal Dinobot from 1998. Molded in plastic. Molded in plastic colors. Paint decos for the eyes. They painted the eyes. And they painted these eyes. Everything else is molded colors. One articulation, two, that's it. Two metal screws, some legs, articulation. And how much was this toy, MSRP? Free with your Happy Meal back in the day. Now they charge for the toy on the side, but free with your Happy Meal. So when you have something cheap, you got to keep it cheap. When you go to the One Steps, this is, I believe, uh, Chain Claw. I forgot, one of the movie toys. I got them recently. Uh, Cataclysm? I don't know. Um, again, some paint decos mostly molded but uh not much else really to talk about and they keep it simple cheaper price point non-articulated hands it's a uh, auto transformer unfortunately that keeps it very simple <laughs> um it's just the price points you mentioned both uh the kingdom inferno not the Kingdom Inferno, the uh, the Optimus Prime from that's a leader class, the Hot Rod that's a Voyager, more budget. It's just more budget, and I think because the Hot Rod was smaller and there was more about accessories, they could put more budget into the hands. It's something that people would like that, but more pieces is more price, and I'm pretty sure people would rather just. You know, like if, if someone told you, would you rather just have the, the, the closed fist peg hole like that or have the open and closed fist, but we have to charge $2 more per unit? I'm pretty sure people will be like... Just 
on that and explain even from a from a budgetary standpoint when you have a price point and the limitations that you have of how much plastic could be used. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, hey, Proto, I can't seem to find the Winging Thunder Leader anywhere. Can you point me in the right direction? Not even eBay has them anymore. When it comes to, to old third-party product, probably eBay is your only bet outside of Check the TFW message boards and use their search engine. Go to, like TFW has their Junkion Exchange, which is where people buy and sell toys from their collection. And if you go into the Junkion Exchange and then use the search function, you could pro and use quotes. So like just type like what I would suggest personally, um, just type the name of the robot. Don't even put the, the company's name. Just put the name of the robot and then do a search so it's kind of more broad for you. And maybe someone's selling one. Maybe someone is selling one. It might even be that. It might even be cheap. It might even be cheap. They charge for Happy Meal toys. Yep. Unfortunately, now that it used to be, it used to be back in the day, um, Happy Meal toys were free with the Happy Meal. You bought a Happy Meal, the toy was free. And then they started noticing that people just wanted the toys. So if you didn't buy the Happy Meal, you would pay ninety nine cents for the toy. Then as time progressed, it became a dollar ninety nine. Now it's two ninety nine. So it's, it got to a point where, uh, you know, I think him, he probably, Dinobot probably, if you bought it individually, was $1.99, but he, if you bought a Happy Meal, he was free back in the, I always keep these Dinobots nearby. I keep, a, I have like a whole little crew of them because they're so cheap, these <laughs> McDonald's guys. So I get a whole bunch of them. Every time I like, I would go to like conventions or something, I always see a whole bunch of the Beast Wars McDonald's stuff and I just pick it up just because people are just giving them away. They don't want them. And I love like throwing them into gift boxes when I do my Patreon like stuff and I ship out. I always throw them in. Uh, where are we at? Next super chat question again. Dreamer out out there. All good about the name. Dreamer out there. Thank you <laughs> for separating it. Um, also, my dog is afraid of Unicron. <laughs> is he? Uh, it's bigger than him, and they know it. They they keep staring at him. Well, he's pretty imposing. That's for sure. He's kind of like a scarecrow in a lot of ways. When you think about it, it's just this big, like, thing. So, uh, what breed are your dogs, by the way? I'm kind of curious. I'm a big dog person. Love my dogs. Anyone that sees on my Facebook, I love my dogs. Uh, Joseph Ritter wants to know, with a super chat question, why are there more cat than dog transformers? What is the cool canine-based transformer that you could think of? I always talk about this. I actually did a YouTube video about this many years ago. Um, number one, yes. There, in all of Transformers history, there was only one actual dog Transformers Transformer. Everything else is wolf-based, uh, if you don't count Rescue Bots. Rescue Bots had a few Transformer uh, that are based off of actual dogs. And that is K-9 from Beast Wars. K-9 from Beast Wars was a German Shepherd, even though German Shepherds did not exist in prehistoric Earth. And that's a complicated thing all in itself in how the German Shepherd was created. Uh, but yeah, K-9 was the first ever do household domestic dog transformer. He's an amazing toy. I love that toy. Him and Wolfang, his repaint, remold counterpart. But there is tons of cat transformers. It is crazy how many cat transformers there are. So it's just, I, I guess maybe cats are just easier to, to do. Maybe, maybe the people who work on transformers just like cats more. I don't know. <laughs> I like dogs more. Than I like both. Don't get me wrong. I, ha I had a, I had growing up. I had, at one point, at a peak, we had three cats, and excuse me, three dogs and five cats, two turtles. That was literally all in one house. I lived in a zoo. I wish I still lived in that zoo. I love my animals. But yeah, uh, canine, and then of course, if you really want to be a completist, so you have canine from Beast Wars, 1997, I want to say, and then in the Rescue Bots line, they had a whole bunch of little animals that transformed into guns and weapons, and they had a little Dalm a Dalmatian, I forget his name, I think it was uh, Waterplug. And then they had the other, do the, do the, do the other dog, which was a yellow one, called Sparkplug. Um, I have them here, I love them. So those two, I believe. And I think there was a blue dog, too, which I guess we'll, we'll just say is a Doberman. I don't know. <laughs> but the Rescue Bots had a whole bunch of little transforming weapon ones. So if you want to get some more transforming dog transformers, uh, check that out. And... Actually, Rescue Bots are on sale, so you can pick them up. This is Rescue Bots Academy, mind you. I believe that was 
rescue bots, Energon armor. I forget what it was called. It was the second series that had them. I've lost track. But thank you for the question. Michael Koo wants to know through the Super Chat Proto Man. I've never bought Beast Saga Beast Fight figures before. Which Beast Saga Beast Fight figure characters do you recommend to buy the most? So, first I want to say... Um, Beast Saga was a anniversary line for Battle Beasts, which is connected to Transformers as history. It was done by Takar, for people that don't know what this is. And there's a connection between those two lines. So Beast Saga came out in, I want to say it was 2011. And they did this huge big push, and there was a whole bunch of figures. And I did a ton of videos. If you actually look up Beast Saga Wave 1, Wave 2, Wave 3, I did a whole bunch of reviews on these. My favorite of the bunch would probably be Sawtooth Shark, which is the shark character. Really like that one. They did a chipmunk one. They did a hamster one. Those ones were adorable. Um, what was another good one? I wish I could show you guys because, like, the beast display. See, like, there's Rodimus, if you could see. Um, that And there's the back of a, of a Battle Beast base. All of this detoff here is all Beast Saga and battle beasts and i wish i could show you dudes but this camera is not it's on a wire unfortunately so one day i'm gonna make i want to make like a mobile camera or something we could go around the room and check out stuff but i would definitely recommend the saw two shark one the shark one i think he comes in a three pack unfortunately though so you'll have to buy the three pack um obviously pirate lio um the main li the lion guy uh who else is really good who else is really there's the army builder which is the frog dude which is pretty cheap too um what has a really nice one there's a lot of really good ones the sculpting on them is amazing the painting on them is amazing and no one bought them but i think big bad toy store recently and this is not a plug by big bad toy store it's just i think they recently restocked them if i'm if i remember correctly uh they probably found a whole bunch of dead stock sitting in some chinese uh, chinese japanese warehouse so they're really cool they're really cool i dig them i love battle beasts so like when b saga came out i was all over that but uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens in the future. I don't know. Some people are rumoring that it's kind of another anniversary coming up or something. Uh, new Beast Wars spinoff, Rescue Bots continuity show idea. All dog bots. I wish. But wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be another Hasbro-owned brand, which is Pup Patrol? <laughs> when you think about Pup Patrol, it's all dogs. The kids show, mind you. It's all dogs, and they all have, like, little, like, I've seen the Pup Patrol toys in the wild, and they all have, like, little pop-up transforming accessories on their backpacks. So, I mean, it's kind of Pup Patrol in a lot of ways, what you're suggesting. Because if it's Rescue Bots, it would be for the play school division. I don't know. I've never watched Pup Patrol, so I can't really tell you much. But I have seen the toys, and I, I'm intrigued. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I just never messed with them. I can't name a single cat. Actually, no, wait. One of the characters in Pup Patrol is named Chase, and the only reason why I know that because it was a trademark save. That's, that's the only reason why I know. The rest of them are not trademark saves for Pup Patrol because all the other trademarks are not Transformer-related. Uh, where are we at? Uh, Michael Koo says, yes, uh, Big Bad Toy Store has some B-Saga stuff in stock. Yep, yeah, and, and the pre-orders are sold out. Oh, wow. I guess people were jumping on them. They're really good, man. Hasbro used to probably use pound puppies. Pound puppies. I remember pound puppies. That was from the 80s, yo. That was the one with the sad faces, and it came in the, the cardboard box shaped like a house, like a dog house. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? I know I saw another question here. Proto, would you also like to see Flatline get a figure? It, it'd be cool. You know, like... There's a lot of, like, original characters that came out of some of those IDW books, whether it be the movie continuity or uh, the G1 continuity, that I just love to see figures done. Like, Flatline, and you think about, like, especially, like, Flatline, something that kind of started from the movie stuff. Um, you know, Flatline is one of those things. There's so many movie toys of characters that never had any fiction that it would, it's such a shame that Flatline just never got a toy. Not even, even, not even like a lazy repaint. Like just take, take a movie night beat and call it flatline and just give it like the flatline color scheme. You know, it is movie night beat, right? Was it called night beat that one? I don't remember. It's the one that you had, it had like red, it was movie dead end and then they repainted it into night beat and they repainted it into wheelie. I'm just looking at it right now. Help me out here. Oh God, that thing's getting in the way. 
these guys, these ones here, I don't know. I do not know every time I have to move the camera and mess everything up. Proto, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, Hasbro would probably use pound puppies. Yes, they would. Um, Paw Patrol is just dogs with cars and other mechanical things. It's all, again, it's, think about it. It's dogs with cars and mechanical things. So it's, it's almost there. It really is. You know, you, you can't uh, step on the toes of your own brands. If you're trying to mess off with uh, Mattel or something or Spin Master, it's one thing. Uh, was it Ollie's today? And they had the Transformer Vault hardback and it was only $6.99. Oh, wow. Let me pull it up for you guys. Let me just get in close. Yeah. Because the whole bookshelf is right here. So, original MSRP... Let's get there. Was $35. So, if it's $6.99... Yo, bro, get it. That's a great book. That is a great book. I think Aaron Archer helped work on this one. Aaron, are you there? Did you work on this one? Uh, this, let's see, what was cool about this book? I remember it showed us, uh, showed us like the, the patent. Patent for uh, Megatron there. Pretty cool. Whole bunch of prototypes. A lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool stuff. They have like all the pullout stuff and everything too. So like here you have like the tech spec that you have and all the tech spec cards that you could pull out. Oh, look at that. Look at that. These are cool, these these vault books. They, they've done them for like a lot of different like TV shows and brands and everything. I know they did a, a cool Batman one that I bought many years ago that had a whole bunch of cool stuff too. Definitely, hey man, $6.99, totally worth it. What a great book. What a great... Even if, you, even if you don't want it, get the book and put it in your bathroom and you have a bathroom reader at least. Great book. I paid full price. So I can't argue with that. Uh, but yeah, thanks for uh, letting people know. Thanks for letting people know, man. That's pretty cool. At Ollie's, eh? Man, I wish I had an Ollie's. Man, I wish I had an Ollie's. Like that, that's, that's one thing I would have loved to have here in Canada. Here in Canada... Okay, we got a super chat question from Lizard Spherix. And he says, if they did do a dog-based team and TFs, they should call them Attack Pack. Wait a sec. Well, number one, I love Attack Pack. Number two, Attack Pack, unfortunately, is owned by Mattel. And they constantly use that trademark all the time on the wrong stuff. It's funny. Right now, Mattel has a Tiger Shark uh, monster truck toy line. The commercials are on air right now, and it looks like Attack Pack, but it's not Attack Pack, and it's freaking crazy. And I love Attack Pack, and I want it to come back, but Mattel just is holding on to that tra trademark and doing nothing with it. Um, the last time they actually used Attack Pack, they used it for some Jurassic Park toys, if I remember correctly, too. But thank you for the super chat to talk about Attack Pack, because... I'll use any excuse. I will go in the other room right now and get my attack pack toys. That's how much I love them. Just to show you guys. There's, there's obviously some like, like year 2000 kids that have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you were born in the nineties or born in the eighties, like me, you know what attack pack is. And then there's people that don't know what, what Ollie's is because I believe that's a North Northern chain, like Northern United States, not in Canada. That's for sure. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Proto Takar Tommy makes a new Tommy Pararial line. So how come we don't have a better uh, battery operated transforming G1 Astro train? Uh, because that's not something that would work in both markets. Probably, they would probably want to do. Trains are not as popular here. It's it's you know like for for Thomas the Tank Engine everyone thinks like oh but Thomas the Tank Engine does well yeah it's from the UK you know the railroad uh, series the book is twenty five on Amazon now Whew, man did I overpay for that thing I love that book though it's a really good book get the Transformer Vault if you can great book 
Great book. A lot of cool stuff. First time we ever got to see Prima with the uh, Star Saber Blade with the Matrix and the Hilt. Really cool stuff. Uh, if you're talking about Amazon exclusive Conehead Seeker 2-pack, they didn't pay, uh, I didn't pay that price, but I bought 2-pack for 60 bucks last summer, and I got them this fall. Good sale. <laughs> I wish I got that cheap. Uh, been to Ollie's. Uh, okay, it's in upstate New York. Okay. Well, that's good then, because then I could probably drive that if the border was open. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Attack pack, like Fortnite gun. There's a gun in Fortnite called Attack Pack, really? Oof. That makes me sad. No one knows Attack Pack. That's like when, um, what's her name there? Nicki Minaj did a song called Chung Lee, and no one had any idea who Chung Lee was. And here's me just going, like, I feel so old. Oh. Now, when they Google Chung Lee, it's not going to be Street Fighter um hey proto if could you point me in the direction of finding netflix soundwave that isn't marked up wasn't netflix soundwave on hasbro pulse wasn't it in their exclusive section or did that already sell out did anyone confirm that for me i could have swore i saw him on hasbro pulse and he was cheap very cheap because outside of that brother you'd have to play the waiting game you'd have to wait because right now people are in scalper mode. Buy, sell high. So you'll have to wait it out. But I could have swore I saw it on Hasbro Pulse. It's a joke. There isn't a Fort Gun called Attack Pack. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm like, how did they end up with that? Um, where are we at here? Hey, Proto, could there be a chance that if they do another big Generations line in 2024 for the 40th anniversary like the thrilling 30 could they add the djd to the line i think they could they could add the decepticon justice division at any point oh it is sold out damn that sucks for people that sucks mm. well then bro you're just gonna have to wait going back to what you're saying sorry chatter um the you know the decepticon justice division they could show up any time in a line. It's just a matter of does Hasbro want to acknowledge those characters? They Number one, I feel they'd have to have different alt modes. That's the first thing. I think they can't turn into what they traditionally are. No, you can't make a Transformer that turns into an electric chair and sell it in retail. <laughs> it's just forget about it. You know, we're talking about trying to sell Megatron turns into a gun. It's already pretty difficult. Um I think it's a trademark reason and a whole bunch of things. And they'll come at some point. We got another super chat question from ADE613. It's almost like he's trying to do some Austin 316. In most recent images of Beast Wars vintage line, Cheetor has his Beast Wars 10th anniversary, 10th anniversary paint job of his OG, which was shown before Y. I actually talked about this last week, uh, ADE. So the images that Hasbro showed us were brand new unique color schemes i wish i had the old slides i could show you um and then walmart when they showed their stock images they used the images of that cheetor right over there this is the the 10th anniversary section here i don't know which one is it that's the thing that's crazy i want to believe that the stock images that hasbro has is the actual product and Walmart just messed up and used weird stock images from the 10th anniversary line back in the day. But what sucks about that is, is now we still don't know what the final product looks like. We don't have an in-package image of Cheetor in alt mode. We only have a Rat Trap image and we have a Megatron image. And what sucks too is the Megatron, the images that they showed had like the, the, the silver head and all the correct decos and stuff from the original toy. While the Hasbro images had the all black head. So we don't know what the final product's going to look like yet. But I do agree with you. There's something confusing with that. And I talked about it last week. I had like all these slides showing like these side by sides. When you get a chance, try to look at the last live stream. I bring it up and uh, we'll hopefully have more information on it in the future. I mean, it doesn't really change my life because I kind of have all of those. But for people that really want to own the original product or something that looks really nice like the original product, I was not a fan of that uh, 10th anniversary repaint because it was like they took Cheetor 
the original season one Cheetor, and they gave it season two colors like the trans metal, and it just looked weird. I mean, I understand they wanted to do something different, but it still looked weird for people. And when you're doing a reissue line that's trying to really be like the original product, you got to at least like kind of harken a little more back to that. But thank you for the question, my friend. Hey, Proto, here's a little finance talk, and I'm sure you mentioned it before on the on the Facebook Marketplace. I saw a hunt for Decepticons highbrow, and they're asking $150. Why? Why? Ugh. Why? Why? The only reason I had to dig for them is because cause there's two of them why he wasn't that rare um i think that maybe i want to and the only reason i have two because i think it's such a great toy i want to think that maybe just it's someone just shystering people that's what i want to say but he's a great figure but he's not 100 150 dollars great figure he's great but not that great and I think there's repaints of them that are uh, considerably, what did I run over here on that chair? That are considerably more uh, expensive. And I think the, I think even the Bacon one might be cheaper though, the, the Obsidian repaint. But it's a great toy. I love it because I love like those World War II uh, planes and stuff. But I wouldn't pay that man. 150 bucks. No way. No way, no way, no way. No way. Hey, Proto, would you like an update of Lugnut? Well, we kind of got Clobber. Clobber was a gender upgrade, I guess. They turned him into a she and gave it one toy that was kind of hollowed out and not that great. The Energon armor flip thingies that they were doing. Oh, Cyberverse. Why, oh, why? We only got half an hour left, guys. Just a warning in advance. Proto, do you think we will... Get another Grimlock in the future? Or has Hasbro created the ultimate mainline toy? It's never the end. We're going to probably get another Grimlock. I always say, like, look, whatever you're comfortable with in that moment when it comes out and feel like this is the peak of a character, give it three years. Hasbro creates some distance from a toy, and then what do they do? They do something else. They figure out ways to tweak it and change it and turn it. I mean, I think in the case of Unicron, it's a little different because will they ever want to do something that big again? I don't know. But I could totally see more leader class Grimlocks in the future or a Voyager scale or a Deluxe scale, something that's good. But it's, it's not something that, like, don't think it's ever the end. Like, every time when someone feels like, oh, this is the best this, we're never going to get anything of that. It's like, no, bro, there's going to be more. There will be. Hey, Proto, will ever be World War II Transformers like the World War II Bumblebee? There's a lot of movie toys that are based off of World War II stuff. There was a really good biplane. I forget his name, and it was practically the Red Baron. That was really cool. There was a whole bunch of really cool World War II toys and stuff. Um, I just can't name them offhand because there were so many. They just threw names on them. It just, Skydive or power dive or something like they they just threw trademarks on all those non-movie character on the non-appearance movie character toys hey pro do you want to see a proper red baron transformer decepticon i just said it the, 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 I, uh, I can't even you, you can't even see him let me just can i lift this yeah let me lift this i can lift this oh but we got to get past the light somewhere back there in the madness that is all these movie toys. Look at all that. Look, it just keeps going. Somewhere in the madness over there, in all of those scout classes, next before we get to the Dark of the Moon era, is that Red Baron one. I forget his name. Someone will Google it. Someone will say it. <laughs> uh, great toy. The movie scouts during that era of 2009, 2010, were some of the best Transformer toys for that price point they were incredibly done whoever was working on them credit to you my friend credit to you where are we at here uh ransack and dive bomb thank you yeah ransack that sounds about right for the for the first one yeah for the for the uh the red one eh uh where are we at proto 
Ever played Dream Mix TV World Fighter for the GameCube? Yes, I did. I don't think it was for the GameCube, though. Was it for the GameCube? I thought it was for PlayStation 2. Uh, since Snake from Metal Gear Solid appears in it, does that mean he has fought Optimus Prime Sonic Mario on his gambling? <laughs> well, that also means that he also fought Ty from Beyblade. means he also fought Michi-chan. He also fought uh, Simon Belmont. Which actually he also fought in Smash Brothers because Simon Belmont is in Smash Brothers also. Um, yeah. Sure. Was it GameCube? I could have swore it was PlayStation. Um, but yeah, let's just say yes, he has. When they say that the Avengers is the most craziest crossover, they've seen nothing. Hey, Proto, how crazy is your recording setup? It's not too bad, actually. In all honesty, like, when I do the podcast, I have my beautiful Blue Yeti mic with all the sound kind of stuff, everything here. And this is actually how you guys are hearing me right now. How you doing, everyone? I'm doing fine. Eh, you know, nice little arm. You know, I try to keep it simple. Two screens to kind of keep track of my stuff. Um, I try to keep it simple. You know, I, I used to have, like... Uh, a much more complex kind of setup and stuff. And then I realized, you know, when you're doing a podcast, the secret really is you want to keep it as simple as possible, especially when you're doing a daily podcast like mine, where I want to find out about the news, take my information in my brain and just splurt it out there. You know, all right, guys, uh, today we're talking about uh, some new Transformer product today, blah, 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 you know. You're very close to 7K subs, am I? Am I? Well, then let's try to reach 7K. Let's try to reach 10K. My goal is to surpass my old channel in subscriptions, which I want to say was 9,000. So if I could pass 9,000, then I will feel proud. I will feel proud. So let's try to get past 9,000 subs. Then I'll be happy. I'm, I don't even want 10,000. I just want to get past 9,000. And then I'll be happy. Um, but thank you for all the subs that we get from all the cool people that love listening to my voice talk about this crazy stuff. I can't imagine why. I can't imagine why Aaron Archer would want to listen to this. Ugh. Can't imagine. Uh, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Please do. Our live streams always do well, though. They always do well. I always find that, like, whenever we do our live streams and I put them in replay afterwards, because when we finish the live stream, they go on private temporarily, because, unfortunately, YouTube has to go through it to make sure that I didn't uh, say anything bad. And then when YouTube goes, it's A-OK, -okay, you could actually put it live again. When it goes live, it does very well. People love watching the live streams. They really do. It's pretty cool that people enjoy it. Even when it's like, you know, think about it. It's people that can't participate like you guys are right now where they're actually able to ask questions and stuff but people really like just listening to the live streams and they enjoy it why do you think it's so long for it took us so long to get a galvatron toy we were getting galvatron toys it's just that they weren't what people wanted think about it look we got classics galvatron or whatever it was called, universe 2.0 galvatron the deluxe we got that people didn't like it we got the titans one but they didn't like it in between that they were repainting that galvatron mold a bunch of times People didn't like it. They took that Galvatron name and they slapped it on all kinds of other little products and pieces and, and PVCs and stuff. People didn't like it. There always was Galvatron product. Age of Extinction. Galvatron product. You know? It's just this was the first time that we've had something that's been really drawn 100% in that Fluoro Deary design and using something that wasn't gimmick based. Like the Titans Return one. Why did it fail? Well, it had to have a Headmaster gimmick. I guarantee if it didn't have that gimmick, it probably would have been a much better looking toy and people would have had a very different opinion of him than that mask setup that he kind of has going on. Why do you think there was a whole third party market that was making heads for that Titans Return version? You know? The universe, yeah, the universe one was not that great anyways. I mean, let me try that. Oh man, you guys can't even see it. Hold on. Uh, let's get to it. He's right over there. Yeah. You can barely see it. Right over there. There's that universe one that nobody likes. <laughs> but the point is, is that, you know, those, uh, there's always been product. It's just no one enjoyed it at all. No one liked it. 
No one liked it at all. And this is the first time we've had something that really has that fluoro dairy flavor that people wanted. Dear Proto, what Optimus mold would you most like to see repainted in Toxitron? Oh, well, you know, Toxitron was a fi it was always associated with that laser rod G2 Prime. So if we get another laser rod-esque G2 Prime with big shoulder stacks and stuff, I think that would do it justice. Because that's kind of its origins and its history. So nothing that's G1 Prime. Let's, let's put it that way. We need something that's a different kind of shape. Like, I feel like even something like Arbata Optimus Prime just has that better shape, that long nose cab, the bigger shoulders. I think that would even be better. Like, if we ever get that that Armada Optimus Prime that uh, Takar has been teasing us for a while. I'm squashing your heads. Stink finger 66. <laughs> Someone watches King, uh, Kids in the Hall. Another obscure reference. Um, hey, Proto, do you have... A mom and daughter dog pair. Mom is a Chihuahua. Dakun Terme. Oh, I have even your 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 dogs. Excuse me. So you have a Chihuahua Dakun Rat Terrier mix. Oh my goodness, that's got to be madness. And one third Chihuahua Dakun. I love Dakun just because they're so funny looking. I had a whole bunch of. Oh my god. I think in how many dogs I I had two Coon Hounds. I had a Terrier. I had a Terrier Pug mix. I had a German Shepherd mixed with uh, Rottweiler. I had Shih Tzu, another Shih Tzu, Border Collie, another Border Collie, uh, Portuguese Water Dog. I've had so many dogs growing up. And that and cats, oh my god, must be like 15 cats in total. I can't even count how many cats I had. But yeah, a lot of animals. A lot of animals growing up. That's why I love them. That's why I love them. Hey, Proto, would you like a Commander class Stratosphere? Yes, because Stratosphere is amazing. And I'd love to have a Stratosphere that doesn't have a GPS nightmare where it'll break and people can't enjoy the original toy. Commander class Stratosphere would work great. And that'd be a cool studio series thing because he was in the movie, technically. Technically, he was in the movie in Revenge of the Fallen. So maybe we will get a Stratosphere one day. Maybe we will. Uh, Proto, what is the teething trouble be like for Transformers? The equivalent to having kidney so what? what? What is the teething trouble be like for Transformers? The equivalent of kidney stones or hernia? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> A burr in their nasty rotator, like Cup would say. So whatever uh, that would be. Because, I mean, if it's a rotator rotator cuff i guess he's referring to but cars don't really have a rotator cuff so i guess i don't know proto i hope you take a second stab at stunticon motormaster he was terrible <laughs> was he are oh, you talking about the uh, combiner wars one well i think they will i think a lot of those trademarks in all honesty all of those all of those aerial bots Br bruticus you know all of them I think all of those are going to get revisited very soon. I really do. And that's going to lead to probably a second stab at combiners. Yeah, supposedly uh, Robot Assassin, uh, that Stratosphere has some kind of GPS issues. I don't know what it is. That's what people have told me. And when they told me that, I never wanted to touch mine again. Only because I love that toy too much. I don't want it to break on me. We got another super chat question from Michael Koo. Proto Man, since Hasbro is ending... The Titan class, supposedly. Does that mean we won't see another new or reissued combiners in the future? Well, the only one would really be like, you know, we have Predaking and, and Devastator. Um, I think maybe that's why Hasbro put out those Devastators that we saw. That like I guess it was like a rerun of it. Like some old stock, old new stock, as I used to call the term. Um, I don't know. You know what? In my opinion, like when you look at like Devastator, the Titan class one, he's maybe only two heads short, like taller than like, let's say some of the, the, the commander class stuff like like Jetfire. So I feel that if we do only get two commander classes, they could kind of mess with that price point and work something out that could be a little more, I guess competitive and then we could have something where we could have some really cool combiners redone 
I mean, look, that Devastator one's pretty awesome, but it is limiting in articulation, and it's kind of the same thing with Predaking. They are what they are, but I really think that they're going to revisit those characters again, and that we're going to see yet another interpretation of Combiners. When was Combiner Wars? Like, what, 2014, was it? Maybe even earlier? Was it 2014? I just remember it was a lot earlier. Um, was it 2014 or 2015? Either way, it was like already more than five years. And Hasbro revisits stuff after five years. The second something is five years old, they don't mind doing it again. So I could see them doing all that stuff again. Uh, but in terms of seeing Titans in the future, it's difficult. It's very difficult because people don't want to, like retailers don't want to stock something that big. Toys R Us doesn't exist in the United States anymore. That would have been a place that had the overhead space to stock it. So I'm pretty sure retailers are going like, hey, we'd rather have two commander classes than a big Titan that just takes all that space. And uh, yes, Ronan, the Ark is a Titan class. It has been confirmed. That will be probably our last Titan, supposedly. Supposedly. Uh, do you think they will revisit Minicon weapons like the Star Saber? I think they will. They like having small price points. Hasbro always falls on the smaller price point. I think as time progresses and Transformer toys are unfortunately getting smaller and smaller and plastic is getting more expensive, the smaller characters will always be favored. I know that, uh, look, I, I think I had this conversation not too long ago. I forget where. But I was saying like how, look, with Titans Returns, we had the little Headmaster head price point. With uh, Power of the Primes, we had the Pretender Shell price point. With Siege and Earthrise, we had the Micro Masters and the Battle Masters, which were the weapon price point. They're always going to have that small price point. And then they invented the Core class, which is the little rat trap and everything. And that's still, that's a little price point. So they, they, they're gonna, they want to keep that price point. So something like mini cons and star saber swords and combiner stuff like that, and maybe even um, you know perceptor and the the street action team from from Armada, that stuff will always find a place in the future. I find. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the next trilogy is Unicron trilogy related. We might see mini cons return. Who knows? Who knows? We shall see. Toys R Us at least is still around. Yeah, supposedly they're popping up again. There's some news about a new owner and everything. I am going to wait to see how that news develops because I remember talking about EB Games, not EB Games, EB, uh, KB Toys coming back, and nothing came of that, unfortunately. Unfortunately. We talked about it today. Yeah, Jason, I, I talked about it with you, Jason, but I, I remember talking about it with another person, too, because a lot of people were asking about that because... It's a weird price point, and Hasbro always falls on that price point. They like that because small product is so easy to to put out there, and it's repaintable like my, like mini cons, mini cons. My goodness, how many repaints of mini cons there must be? Like a single mini con mold. We were just talking about repaints. A single single mini con mold repaint. Is probably maybe even repainted more than any Seeker Jet. They probably have like a million repaints of like Jolt. Like I'm looking at the Power Ranger team that you would literally call. Let me lift them up here. God, you guys can barely see it. Hold on, let me get in there. Yeah. Spark plug. And all his repaints. Yellow, blue, gold, red, green, orange. He's a Power Ranger team in himself. Minicon spark plug. And yeah, see those chicks there? That's from Gyro Zetter. People are wondering what that is. What is going on there, Proto? A gyro Zetter. That's what's going on. Really cool Transforming Robot series that gave Transformers Prime a run for its money. Hello, how are you? I love Transformers. Brief me on them. Well, Roman, they're more than meets the eye. Uh, Yeah. Where are we at? Where are we at Minicon Spark Plug Rainbow. Yeah, exactly. And and there's more colors behind it. You just couldn't see it, but there's other colors too. They did purple. They did like a like a brown color scheme. I see sexy anime ladies. Well, that's uh, 
<laughs> That's from Gyro Zetter. I collect them all, so I have to have all the figures. Don't judge me. Lewd and crude. By the way, reissues of G1 Soundwave are at Walmart. Can buy on the website. Ah, there you go. Yeah, I think it's on sale, too, if I remember correctly. It's a little cheaper. Hey, Proto, would you like an update of Overcharge, a.k.a. the Minicon? Of course I would. He's probably has one of the best names ever. A taxi, ja uh, taxi transformer. I would love to see Overcharge come back, but that trademark's probably long gone at this point. Would be really cool. I believe they, they used it first. They used it um, for an e-hobby toy, and they did that on purpose because that way they could use the Overcharge trademark in the U.S. later, like to actually register it and probably use it for a Blitzwing repaint. And then they just never used it for a Blitzwing repaint, and they used it for that, that Minicon. And the rest is history with that, and then they never did anything with it again. Hey, Proto Man, what's the difference between Galvatron and Galvatron 2? Fictionally, um, there's actually two different kinds of Galvatron 2s. You have Galvatron 2 from Beast War 2nd, and then you have Galvatron 2, the dimension hopping. It's not Galvatron from that continuity, but another continuity trying to kill Megatron. There's so many different versions. Uh, the Galvatron 2 that you're probably referring to is the Japanese version, which if I could pull over, I don't want to have to dig and get another book. I keep go doing like this to you guys. Um, one of my Studio Ox books has a whole bunch of art and stuff and has tons of Galvatron 2 art. Galvatron 2 is usually the toy accurate colors, where Galvatron is the regular colors. It's a whole complicated matter. And then there's other Galvatron 2s and different continuities also. Hey, Proto, just curious if you ever heard of the band The Proto Man. Yes, I Proto Men. Yes, I have. Um, my friend went to see them live and sent me a sticker. And my favorite song by The Proto Man is Light Up the Night. They're really cool. Uh, but the lead band member of The Proto Man, um, he has a motorcycle helmet based off of Proto Man's design. I did that first. Uh, back in 2001, my racing helmet was based off of Proto Man with the V and everything. Like, like pretty much looks like this. Oh, something fell there. So, uh, the little Proto Man figure fell. Oh, well. I'll grab him later. Hear me out. Godzilla versus Kong versus Transformers. Well, then it'd have to be Devastator and the Combiners fight, fighting them because... Or, or Trypticon. Because Kong and Godzilla's scale is a little wonky compared to Transformers. Wouldn't be fair. You'd have to make Grimlock and Primal huge. Huge, huge, huge. Proto, were you obsessed with Lyo Convoy as I was back in, in 98, 99? Are you kidding? When, when Beast Wars Second was first like discovered by the Western fandom... Um, I think it was Benson Yee, he got the first episode and the second episode, and he just took, like, low-quality screen caps of it. And then it was uh, a member of the fandom called Rockman666. He uh, recorded in very low quality the intro, Get My Future. Um, and I was just like, oh, my... Like, what I loved more than anything was, oh, my God, all these Beast Wars toys that exist in retail for us that didn't have show counterparts now have show counterparts. Like Snarl being Tasmanian Kid and Spitor being, you know, um, Diver and Clawjaw being Scuba and Apache, uh, not Apache, Baboom being Apache. So like that was really cool just so that those characters that we owned toys of that didn't have show counterparts now had show counterparts. Lyo Convoy was just awesome because he had a Matrix in his chest, which was so cool because at the time that was, ooh, you know, no Transformer toys had a Matrix in their chest. He was technically one of the first ones, if not the first one, if you don't count the Metal Force Optimus Prime toy from Japan, uh, it was one of the first toys to have a Matrix accessory. So that was a big deal. And then, of course, we would have Big Convoy with the removable Matrix and the rest is history. But he was awesome, man. He was awesome. You know, even... even um. You know, some of those, like, those other, like, Beast Wars second kind of exclusive color schemes. You know, like, when you look at, uh, when you look at, like, the color scheme for, 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 uh, Diver, you know, doing a green frog instead of the traditional, like, purple, like, not purple, like, clear blue that Spitor was. Like, there was a lot of really cool repaints in that line. 
And then, of course, all those unique molds that came later on from all the uh, Decepticon side with Thrustor and, and all those others. Love it, love it. Brody, do you think we'll get the Nemesis out of the Nemesis out of Earthrise Prime? They're going to... If there is a Optimus mold, there is a black repaint. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. And we got seven minutes left in the stream. Oh, man, I just realized it. We have seven minutes left for Super Chats, guys. Wow, it, it flew today, didn't it? Wow, this, the chat just flew today. Is it just me? I don't know. Time traveling Transformers make my head hurt. Yeah, Michael, it makes mine too. Although the best Transformer series ever was time traveling, so I don't know. Maybe it's still good, though. Maybe it's still good. Uh, Proto, if, if uh, Galvatron was a Commander class figure, would he have come with Beast War Second Galvatron expired accessories, including a cape? I think if he was a Commander class, they probably would have done something similar to what they're doing with Rodimus, where they probably would have had to give him some kind of playset or something. They would have like, like I honestly, you know what I think they would have done? They would have, they would have given a little Micro Master larger playset. Similar to like, uh, God, what was his name? I'm not talking. I'm talking about the Thunder Arrow from Beast from uh, Transformers Victory. Um, oh my God, what's his name? There was one of the the helicopter one, Skyhopper. Um, Skyhopper, you know, like just do like a helicopter transforming into MicroMaster playset kind of thing, and include Galvatron with it they'd have to do something silly like that and gang mold it so the purples work with the colors too and it could come off the assembly line. I don't know. I don't know. Some weirdness like that. They'd have to do something like that. Hey, Proto, did you know Target-exclusive TF scene statues, oh yeah, the ones that are done by Jada, have a Walgreens-exclusive Thundercracker? Oh, really? Well, I didn't know about that. That's pretty cool. I love those figures because they have cool backgrounds. I almost wish we could just remove the statues and just have the backgrounds and, and put that together. And then you have a cool battle scene you could put your figures on. Because it, it has a really cool retro uh, Sunbow Cybertronian kind of background to them. I really like them. But I didn't know there was a th Thundercracker. Is there any photos online? I'd like to see that to like share to people. Thank you for the news, though. Thank you, my friend. Uh, they should make an update of R.E.D. Scourge. Well, if they do an update of R.E.D. Scourge, there's going to be plenty of repaints, that's for sure. So we're going to take one or two Super Chat questions, and then we're going to call it a night, guys, because we're already past the two-hour mark. Man, did it fly today. Wow, did it go quickly. Didn't realize how fast it was going to be. Hey, Proto, would you like more Wreckers? Of course I would love more Wreckers. I think we'll see more. Some of the Wreckers are already trademarked names. We're probably going to see another Springer in the near future, probably through the Studio Series line. Um, you know, we're probably going to see another Sandstorm, probably going to see another Broadside, probably going to see yet again at some point another Impactor. Uh, we'll see more Wreckers always in the future. If you're referring to the movie ones, well, if they ever want to revisit those versions again. Oh, it's on TFW. Okay, I guess the news just broke. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll call it a night then. We'll call it a night. So once again, guys, thanks again for joining uh, the stream. Um, I just want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Symbiote Studios and Hasbro with their cool product and their Transformer plush. Again, be sure to check out March 22nd on SymbioteStudios.com to pick up your Grimlock and Starscream. And of course, if you didn't get any of the others yet, Bumblebee's almost sold out. Better pick him up. But uh, thank you again for coming. Thank you for uh, enjoying all the crazy stuff we do. If you want to support the podcast, patreon.com forward slash protoman. I'll put the link below so you can support the podcast. Let me know that I'm doing a good job in this crazy world that is Transformers. Thanks again, everyone, for coming. We peaked at around 170 again today. Thank you, everyone, who just enjoys what we do here. It's pretty crazy, the world we're in. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. And enjoy your Transformers. And as always, roll out.